everybody. I thought I'd sit here and chat a little bit today. Um, just letting you know, today we are going to make this little guitar. This was kind of a request that I had a long time ago, but it's not exactly the kind of guitar you're going to probably wish that I would do, the per person that requested requested it. Um, this is going to be like a Mexican guitar and I thought it was kind of cute so um, hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, uh, with me. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for your uh, patronage on my YouTube channel to continue to watch. I am fast approaching a thousand and I'm hoping to get there this year. I mean I have about I guess about 40 more um, subs subs to get so uh that's why i like if you could share the f the painting um if you could possibly watch more um i'm not quite at the four thousand hours that are needed to begin to monetize and that would really help me a lot if i could start to get some um monetization for my videos it's it's been a struggle trying to get um supplies and and well you know uh yourself if you're painting along with me um this isn't exactly a cheap uh hobby and uh i've been very fortunate uh finally we have a hobby lobby close by and i can get some of the hobby lobby paints that are a little bit more reasonable and um they work pretty well i i like their consistency um they've you know they're not as transparent as some of the cheaper colors or paints and I I do appreciate it it's master's touch and it's a pretty good paint so um, oh, let me have a little sip of my lemonade today uh, it's pretty nice here in Pittsburgh uh, we've been having a lot of rain and I see that a lot of people across the country are having some issues and I just hope that you guys that uh, watch my YouTube channel are safe and um, don't have any issues there with that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tornadoes and things that are going going around uh, the Midwest there or the middle of the country. So um, I'm just hoping that uh, everybody is safe. And you know, you guys are such a blessing to me because. I get so many nice compliments, and um, I like it when you make a comp, you know, a, a, not a compliment, but even just, um, if you could just be nice. I know that sometimes in the beginning of my, uh, my earlier videos, um, the sound wasn't quite uh, up to par. I did get, finally, I got a, a decent mic that I could plug into my camera, which has helped a bit. I think it's, uh, you know, been a little bit louder, I'm hoping, anyway. And if you have that issue for my earlier videos, just turn up your volume on your computers or put some headsets in. Uh, sometimes that helps a little bit, too. Um, there's been other comp, comp uh, responses there that you do like my videos, and that's a good thing. I like to see that. Um, I like to know how you... And, I am so impressed with some of the people who have done some of the work that I have actually, you know, posted on my channel, and they'll send me a photo, and I am just wow, it's uh, it's very good. So now my earlier videos also had um, a place where you could go get the traceables, and now I have it on Patreon. Uh, and I hope that you would subscribe for just a dollar a month. It's not that expensive. Uh, I think everybody could afford a dollar uh, to get the tracings. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to do that because and that helps me too as far as um, paying for some of these things that I'm, I'm doing. So if you get a chance, head over to my Patreon. Uh, I usually have it in the info section where you can find that... Um, you know that patreon uh, link and uh, let's see if you want to see anything um, I had a request the last time to do a waterfall which I did and uh, it really turned out nice and I want to show you something I bought a frame now you have to 
understand I got this frame up at Hobby Lobby and it was a uh, damaged a bit but look at how nice that looks in a frame isn't that beautiful I am so happy with that and the only damage I saw was just a little bit of paint maybe right here and I think I can fix that without a problem and uh, that frame was only uh, that was a $40 frame and I got it for $15.99 which was a real bargain because that's a that's a beautiful frame what do you think beautiful so um, I just have to frame that now put that in a frame and I don't know if you remember um, the Easter Bunny that I did I found another frame at Hobby Lobby they were having 50% off and this frame was worth $23 and I got that half off and doesn't he look cute in that frame I think he's adorable I just love this I don't I I'm gonna hang on to him because he's so cute he is just an adorable little little rabbit so um yeah I, I I'm real happy with that because you can find some decent bargains with framing and uh I used to get my frames a pack of tans, but they're going out of business, so I won't be able to get them there anymore. So I just look at the clearance items, and there we go. I mean, that frame there is worth quite a bit, and I got it really significantly less. And um, so I guess uh, as far as that goes, that's that's going to be it for today. I want well, not for today, but we're going to get on to our painting. Uh, I have to just set my camera at a different angle so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, this actually is a 16 by 20 um, uh, canvas. I already have it traced on, and I just have to adjust my camera so you can get the whole thing in there because it's it's going to be um, a portrait instead of landscape so when you do uh, I don't know if you can see this I have the have it on there uh, this is called portrait this would be landscaped so and I have the canvas gallery uh, wrapped which is real nice too that uh, I got those at Jerry's Artorama um, they were having a sale and uh, this is just how my luck is <laughs> We were going to do a fundraiser for the Jefferson Elementary School, um, and I had bought a ton of canvases because I thought uh, people were going to sign up for that. Well, it turned out no one showed except three people, so we canceled it. We ended up canceling it. I had to send some of my stuff back. Uh, I spent quite a bit because I ex expected uh, out of 734 families, I figured that at least 100 would show up, but we didn't have that success. So, unfortunately, that uh, fundraiser didn't work out as well as we had hoped. Um, I'm not sure why, because, you know, you go to these, like, um, painting parties and things like that, and uh, it was just exactly what I do. You know, I do those paint parties around here. Um, I usually like to do them in someone's home, but, uh, you know, that was just an on-site one. And uh, it's just my luck. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> we just, you know, we're still blessed. We still can do this, and that's what's important. And thank heavens, you know, thank God for that. And um, without... Without him, I, I probably wouldn't be here doing this. So he's given me this ability, and I appreciate that too. So let's get on with our painting. Camera adjusted. I have my uh, have my picture drawn on, and we're going to get started now. So we're going to start out. Uh, we're going to mix like some white and phthalo green to get the background. So I'm going to get my white, which is a Liquitex Basic. I'm going to put that out on my cam, on my palette. And we're going to need quite a bit. Uh, so we're going to mix a decent amount. And then I'm going to put my phthalo green into that. And this is a Galleria phthalo green, and this is before they actually started to make phthalo green white, um, blue, and green. So, or th however that works, I don't know what they're doing with it. But um, 
I'm going to put that in here, my phthalo green. And I'm going to mix this up with a palette knife because I do not want to get my brush all gooped up with it. So let me just pull out some of that white and I can show you the mix. It should be kind of a light mix. Um, I kind of like the way that is there. And I might mix a little bit more because I'm afraid that I'm not going to have enough. So let's mix a little bit more. And this is my Stay Wet palette. I like that because what it it stays wet and that's what I'm looking for. Um, that my paints don't get dried out. I tend to make quite a big putt, uh, mix here. Um, which is like mostly on my uh, paper there, my palette paper. So I'm going to use, in order to do this, I'm going to use my number 12 Bright. And I am going to start with the background. And we're just going to make real nice little soft strokes. And we're going to make sure we get the uh, edges once again. When I go here, I'm just going to be very careful going around everything. Getting as close as possible to my drawing here. So my husband, I think I've told you, he plays in a band. And it was the suggestion of the band leader, um, Evan, to make a guitar. But I'm, I'm kind of leery on some of these guitars because you have to just get it right, like a Fender bass or whatever. So I figured this would be kind of nice. It's just, it's a guitar. Might not be exactly what we want. <laughs> But it'll still be pretty. Normally, I never mix enough paint. So I made sure I had enough this time because I did not want to not be able to cover the canvas. Remember, this is a 16 by 20 portraiture layout, portrait layout versus landscape. I, uh, in order, like I was telling you before about when you watch the videos, if even if you're not going to watch it the whole way through, all you have to do is uh, turn off your sound and just let it run till the end. Um, that'll kind of give me more minutes in my, you know, 4,000. I am halfway there with that. So by the end of the year, I have to have at least the 4000 in order to get monetized. I know that sounds crazy, but um, I could really use that help. And they also like to see comments. The analytics uh, are very important. So they like to see the comments. If you like and share, you give me a thumbs up. They all like that. They... I mean, it picks it up. The uh, algorithm picks it up. Be careful going around the guitar. Now, if you want to use a smaller brush, you may do so. 
I'm just using this one because I can cover um, more, more of the canvas in a quicker amount of time. my Sally in the studio today she's uh, helping me with sleeping over there she's uh, she doesn't like me out of her sight and like today's the day I always take care of my grandkids so um, now the summertime might be a little tricky because I will be having them on Wednesdays and Thursdays when I usually videotape so I'm hoping that I can continue to make my videos in a timely manner so here I am I'm just doing the uh, edges like I like to do even if you frame these sometimes those edges will show you know so got those edges done oh, kind of went into the guitar so that might be a little problem but I don't think so all right <clears throat> that covered very nicely don't you think it covered the canvas real nice just getting any kind of uh... now here you can see where my fingers poked so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my water. I'm going behind the canvas here. Behind, and I'm going to spritz it in those spots. And what will happen when that uh, dries, it will, it will um, shrink back. So if you ever get a little pokes or anything like that, you can do that. It will uh, take those out of there. All right. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. So I'm going to add a little bit more green to my mixture here and we're going to shadow around the guitar. So I just used that same bit of paint that I had. I just add a little bit more of the green, make it a little darker. Okay, there we go. So you can see that shade, much darker. All right, and I think what we'll use this time is a number six um, bright. That's my favorite little brush. We're gonna go around here and just shadow it up. Let's see if this is darker. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is good. This is good. And just kind of like work it softly at the edges. Kind of working that into the what we have here. Because that's still wet. 
and we kind of want to get that in before it gets too dry with a little bit of shadow. In order to blend that, we can use a dry brush and I have my bristle here. This is a number 10, I believe, or number, yeah, number 10. Just kind of feather it out a little bit just with a dry brush and that'll feather it a little more. That's okay if you get it into the guitar. We just want to kind of feather it in. So we want to kind of work fast on this because we do not want that all to dry on us. So I am going to also be working on a collaboration pretty soon uh, for the summer. And uh, that happens to be with Cinnamon Cooney, I believe, uh, the Sh Sharpa, Art Sharpa. I'm sure you know her. Everyone seems to know her pretty well. And I'm just going to go with this one here because this is drying over here. And I guess I'm going to get some of my glaze on my, um, on my palette here. Can I open it? Yeah, she's uh, hosting something for the summer. And uh, that'll be up in June. a little bit better here and um, yeah I'm excited about that so I'll keep you posted as to when that's going to happen that's a little much there but that's all right we'll just feather it just lightly go with this brush I'm going to go into my glazing liquid, kind of let that get smooth out there. Same on the other side, this kind of like helps to blend it. If you have a hard time, if it starts to dry on you like this was doing to me, you just use that glazing liquid. Go into that and just kind of smooth it. Oh, what the heck? Hmm. Smooth it a little bit with the glazing liquid. I love that glazing liquid. That is by um, Golden. And it really works nicely. I'm just going to put that into the other stuff. Now, if you find that you've gone into your guitar, I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but we are going to uh, put some white in there just to be sure it doesn't bother it any. just to kind of give it something so that if it does bother it at some point, uh, it won't show through. This will help. Helps it. All right. Smoothing it a little bit more. Okay. All right. So our next step will be to paint the guitar and we're going to use um, some burnt sienna and cobalt blue. We're going to mix that, uh, that we're going to put that in there. Um, we're going to put that in, I guess, 
uh, maybe around this here area right here. That will be where we put that. So I'm going to rinse out my brushes. I don't want to leave them in the water because then it'll uh, screw up my bristles. So let's see, we got cobalt blue and that's basics. I'm going to put that on on my palette. And I am going to use the burnt sienna. Let's see, where's my burnt sienna? Here we go. Oh, that's raw sienna. Here's burnt sienna right here. And that's uh, Windsor Newton Gallery. Galleria. However they say that, I'm not sure. And we are going to mix more of the burnt sienna. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that out. Um, mix that. A little bit more of that. Um, and just like well, maybe, well, yeah, like two to one. This is going to be two to one. I'm going to be using my palette. So I'm going to put, let's see. So I got one part of that, two parts of this. We're just going to mix that. It's going to be like a nice bluish brown almost green it looks green let me put a little bit more of that in there I want it to be more of a blue the, I guess the burnt sienna has a lot of yellow in it all right so it's gonna it's kind of a dark green so I'm gonna go with my number six brush and we're just gonna go into this area right here um, all right. Ooh, that looks nice. I like that color. Now try to go in the circle and try to stay steady with it. If you hold your bro, oops, I got that into the neck. Uh, just kind of like steady it out. Like that. You can grab some of that glazing liquid. It'll kind of help. That your brush doesn't get real dry. All right, so we're going to end up having to do another coat of that, I believe. It's just a little. I'm going to add a. I'm going to go into my cobalt blue because I want that to be a little bit bluer. I don't know if that'll go over that or not. Well, I think that looks good, and then we'll let that dry a little bit, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go into our raw sienna. Uh, that's this one here. And that was a basics raw sienna. I'm going to see uh, basics is kind of a little bit more of transparent paint. So it's it kind of gives you a little bit. It's not as um, as um, you have to do a couple coats with that. So we're going to go around here. Uh, we're going to fill in as much of the guitar as we can. And so our, our little designs there are going to disappear. And we'll probably have to go back in. And uh, they might not disappear, though, if this is transparent enough. And I'm still using my number six, Bright.
yes, this is a paint that you're going to have to like do another coat with it. Only because I don't like this being so transparent. damp there with the uh, blue. I do like that shade though. That's pretty. Oh boy. That went into the base of this. So I have to wait till that dries a little bit. Do. I'm going to dry that blue. Okay. So maybe that I won't go into it. It's easy there. Kind of just go around in the same uh, pattern as the guitar, you know, keep it rounded. See, like that, you're going to make rounded, rounded strokes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep using this smaller brush, but I think on the inside part there, I'm going to go into my bigger brush again because I want it to, my strokes to be a little bit more consistent. We'll see how I can finish this up. I don't know. But like in here, you know, it would be nice to have it a little bit bigger. But I'll continue to use this one here, this brush. I'm going to change the direction here. Now I'm laying my brush flat against the canvas in order to get that circle there, or that roundness. I'm going to do that the same here just to get that nice and round flat and against the line there. Okay. Oops, see that's still wet that and drying as well.
So this guitar is more of an acoustic guitar. Okay, I'm going to dry this. Oh, I don't like the way this went here. And I will be back. All right, so uh, I'm going back in um, with my raw sienna. I'm going to paint another coat onto my guitar. It's all dry. So I'm going to do that. And this time I just, after I get this on, I might just fill in with my larger brush. And I'm going to also go around this um, again. I think I want it lighter. I don't like it as that dark, but it might look all right, actually. I'm just not sure if I like that or not. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush out and then I'm going to go in with my other, my larger brush and brush it in. So I'm going in with that number 12. This is like a nice soft brush too, which I think kind of doesn't leave all those little brush marks. Making it nice and smooth. Very nice. Okay. So I'm going to go over the blue there. I'm going to actually, instead of that mix, I'm just going to use my straight cobalt blue and just kind of layer it on top of here. See how that works. Ooh, yeah, that looks nice. Kind of brings that to a better shade.
If you go into the inside, that's all right, because um, we're going to be doing that in black. I like that much better and I kind of made a mistake there so I'm going to use this brush go back into my raw sienna just kind of go around that a little bit there we go all right so what I'm going to do now I am going to um, Let's see, I don't know. I want to just go in here and make that black. So, I'm going to get my black, Mars Black. Just straight Mars Black. And I'm going to still use my number six. painted in get that nice and dark And I'm still going to make another coat of this, I think, because I'm still not happy with that color. So I want to kind of like go over that again. and kind of narrow that out a little too it's just a bit too big there. all right um there kind of rounding that out a little bit better all right so I'm going to just get my cobalt blue and what I'm going to do I'm going to pull that little bit of greenish color that we made before just a little mix it with my cobalt blue and I think I got a nice, nice shade here now. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. Mucho better. Mucho's better. Mucho better. Better, better, better. Okay. Okay, now the neck, I'm going to make that nice and dark, um, I'm going to mix raw and burnt sienna together, so let's see here, let's mix that together. going to do the neck oh that's not dark enough I'm going to add a little bit of black in there that'll get it nice and dark we want it to be a nice dark brown color this let's see okay 
ended up getting some of that uh, turquoise blue because my brush fell into it. So we got a little bit of that going on in here. This might not be dark enough. I think what I'm going to do is find my raw umber. Hold on once. All right, I found my raw umber. And I'm going to use that for the neck. I'm going to still be using my number six. And I think this will really cover it up nicely. Oh, uh, yeah, this is much better. Much better. Hold your brush flat. You have to turn it, oops, turn it in order to get a straight line. You want a straight line here. I'm doing it on the side. All right. Now you can see where you need to add some colors to our guitar, some of the paint shades. Probably have to add another coat of this to cover. I don't know what it is, what's happening to the basics. Um, they're just not as strong as they used to be. They used to cover better. Seems as though they've changed. Okay. All right, I'm going to rinse out my brush again, and I'm going to just get a tad of that green, greenish blue shade to kind of fill in right here. I need to get that filled in. All right, I'm going to have to do that with this. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my number, I think it's a number two, two round, so I can dab that in there, because it's, uh, I don't like a little white showing here, this is no good. Sometimes it's just hard to get that in there the way you want it. So, okay. Now we want to go around our guitar again because I think we need to have that just a tad, tad darker. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of my phthalo green with my light mixture that I had. I'm going to put a little bit more of that color in there. And then I'm going to be using um, my glazing liquid. And we're going to go around all this again. Okay, let's see here. I 
I want a dark color around here. I want this to show darker than the other. All right, now I'm going to get my blending brush here that I had before, and I'm going into my glazing liquid. Oops, doesn't need to be on that. And we're going to kind of just glaze over this so it kind of blends a bit. Just want it to blend into the other. Just kind of getting that blended out, blended out. We can always mix some more of the other one. Let's see. I actually have some of that, but I'm going to mix a little bit more of that, make it nice and light. Just gonna fill that back in. Kind of just blend that out, also. Just blend it out. This wasn't showing enough to mention here. I hate when you have to go over paint because it's just not working the way it should. That's all about. Oh, all right. Okay, go into this down here. I want two different colors in our guitar here. Blend it in. 
it's always nice to use that uh, glazing liquid because it'll blend it so nice. better. Yeah, I like that better. Let's get that nice and sanded in there. Same in here. Need some more glazing liquid here. That nice so much better so much better very good okay let's get that like kind of curvy get that glazing liquid just smooths it out makes it look more natural smooths it makes it pretty look at that so much better so nice love it love it all right so i'm gonna rinse out my brushes just right here you can see that little bit of white i'm just gonna dab it in there with my round brush same here that's glazing liquid there we're going to go over that neck again we're going to put another coat on our guitar we have to little drink here So, let me get a paper towel. Yeah, I want to put another coat on the guitar because it's just a little bit, you can still see things that I don't want to see. Put a little bit more of that um, raw sienna out. Sometimes I think it might be better to, like, especially on some of these canvases that are student grade, which I believe this might be, um, it's sometimes good to maybe coat the canvas with a gesso, only because of the, um, let's get that a little smoother in here. And closer here there we go uh, it just seems to not grab as well um, so I'm using my glazing liquid in order to get into some of those grooves of the canvas It takes a little longer for this to dry, but I think in the long run, it works better that way. Okay. 
with the um, glazing liquid. So, yeah, I think that pops that out much better. And uh, I'm going to continue here. Kind of get this here where I was. Perhaps all we need is some glazing liquid with that too, just to kind of get in those grooves. So the royal baby has come, and um, everybody seems to be so excited and thrilled. The cute little thing, he's so adorable. Little baby, Sussex. Awesomeness, huh? Uh, it's too bad Diana's not here to see our little grandchildren. They're just so adorable. Yeah, it's sad. Sad, sad. Okay, so we're going to go into our larger brush now. I'll dry this out. And go into that paint, that raw sienna, and fill it in again. Get those little marks out of there. I'm still kind of going in the, the um, way that this is constructed. Round, round, round. Okay, that looks great. All right, so let's go into our blue, our cobalt blue. We're going to go around that area again. Um, just getting all that back in there again. And I'm just going into my blue and that little bit of shade that we had made before, kind of putting more of my blue into it. We're going to do the black again, too. And we'll do the brown as well. Yeah, this is uh, interesting how this paint is going on. These these are my newer canvases too, so I don't know if it's the canvas. It could be um, their Creative Mark canvases. So I don't know. Might have to gesso these before I paint on them. Because they aren't uh, aren't making the paint go on so nicely. All right. Now let's do the neck again with our brown raw umber. Yeah, this is better. Now, if you're worried about a straight line, I have to wait until the paint dries a little bit. So let me um, let me uh, dry it with the hair dryer, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use tape. Uh, this is artist tape, and we'll put that. So that we can get this, oops, is a straight piece here. Hopefully, I can get my artist tape to 
not break on me. So we're just going to put it right here. Make it nice. Now the thing about an artist artist tape is it will lift off and it won't take off the paint, hopefully. <laughs> we got to see. It's not supposed to, anyways. So we'll see what happens here. But this way... Be able to get it nice and straight. All right. So let me just make another mixture here. I'm going to make, um, Let's see. I want to mix um, burnt sienna which is wait a minute. I don't, burnt sienna burnt sienna. I got the wrong one. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, a touch of cobalt blue, just a little. I don't want the same thing to happen. Um, happened before here. Made it too dark. It didn't even look brown. I mean, you know, it didn't. It looked more green. Add a little bit of that raw umber to it. Just a smidge of the white because that helps to kind of like make it a little bit more opaque. And that's the color I came up with. Can you see that? Okay. So let's do our neck. I don't know with that base coat that we have in there that might help it to um, look darker. This way we can get pretty darn close to. Yeah, see it needs to be a little darker I think. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that raw umber in there. versus the blue because I don't want to come up with green. Take a little bit of that paint off here. I'm going to use my big brush to blend that. Now that same color, I'm going to go around the edge of my guitar also. And I'm just going to use my round brush for that. That was that one that I used before. It was the number two. Alright, I'm going to go around the edge of my, just around the edge here. And it's not that big of an edge here that we're going. And we'll have to... We 
whoops, don't want to go that far, but you can blend the rest of it with your finger. So, I don't want all that big in there. So let me get my other brush. Number six. Go back over this because that's way too much there. So we can fix that. Okay. And we're just using the same shade that we used on the neck. Now I'm holding down my little finger on the canvas. Okay, let's get this a little lighter here. There we go. Don't want that to be all messed up there. Okay. I'm not pushing hard on it. You need to have the round brush because you don't want a big, big outline here. brush go into my dark here because I kind of just went a little bit out of the lines there okay everything can be fixed that's what's amazing with the acrylics because it dries fast enough and if you do make a mistake you can always go back it's not like uh, when you're using oil Oils are a little different. I'm just going to twist a little brush in there. Um, because it takes so long for those, those oils to dry. Alright, I'm going to go over that again. Uh, I'm going to use my bigger brush, you know, to get this a little bit more even. Use my bigger brush. Okay. I'm going to use my round brush, go into my black, and fix this right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this tape off. And see how nice and straight that is? That's perfect. So now I have to <laughs> fix this part, but I think it's better. And I can do that with the... Uh, my brush here I think I can get that real nice um, just go into my burnt sienna here can't believe I can't get that there we go that's good <clears throat> and that darker brown kind of gave us the base coat that we needed now I have to get my round brush here to do this right here. OK. 
Okay. Oop. I want that to get messed up. And just kind of blend this up into here and around. All right. Now, let me get this again here. Here we go. Now, everything dries a little darker. Um, that's just normal. I'm getting my round brush because what we're going to do now is just make little strokes, probably um, about a half inch apart. Let me just get that right there. Half inch apart. I may have gone up into that. Let me get some more of this here. Going in, up into the blue. Okay, uh, half inch apart, so with my round brush. So we're just going to go like this. All the way around. Oops. All the way around our guitar. All the way around. Okay, uh, we're going to go around all that, and we will be back. All right, so I got the little little things there. I'm going to do the bridge here. Uh, I'm going to actually draw that back on as I do this. So um, I'm getting my ruler, and it's going to come down here. And I just want to get that in with that dark shade darker brown shade that we made the and that's about a half an inch here so I'm just gonna make a little mark here make sure I did it like as a half inch here let's see yeah that's good okay and do it here Actually, what we should do is, so I have a little general idea how large that should be. Okay. Right like that. Get some more paint on my brush. And I am going to use my T-square so I make sure that it is straight. We want to make sure it's straight. And these come in very handy for that. Yeah, see it's a little crooked here. I just have to go like that. Fill it in. Well, and we want to wipe that off because I don't want to get it on my other parts of my painting. I'm going to grab a little bit of my blending. Uh, liquid. So I can fill that in nicely. My glazing liquid. All 
right, so the, we're going to do the guitar, guitar neck here. And we got to put the little lines in that. And I'm going to measure from, from my pattern as to where these lines are going to go because I want to make sure we do it accurately. So the first one comes off of the top and it will be, let's see, almost two inches down. It's like um, one and three quarters. So we're going to use black for that. And I'm still going to use my brush that I was using before my round. It's a num that number two round. Okay, we're going to make a mark at right about here is where that one is. The next one is almost two inches. This comes right to here. Oh, that's the wrong part. Well, let's see. Almost two. I should get new glasses. Which I am in dire needs for. <laughs> I need to get new glasses and son of a gun. I need to see better. Okay, the next one goes one and a half from that. Which is about right here. Just marking them. The next one is almost one inch. Almost one inch. Next one is about seven eighths. So we'll get my T-square T again, get little black switches on here. We don't want that. We don't need those little black pieces. So I'm going to use some water. Get that off of there. Okay. All right. So I'm going into my glazing liquid again so I get a nice point. We'll draw the line. Okay, I'm gonna make sure we get that straight and I gotta hold it so it goes straight across. Okay, you don't wanna go off of the You could use probably um, an acrylic pen, pink pen, if you want, instead of if you don't want to try straight lines. But this is the easiest way for me to do it. And I have enough paint on my brush right now, which is helping. I grab some more paint. Making sure my T-square is lined up with the edge of my canvas here. Okay, and one more. One more. All right, there we go. So that's that. I'm going to wipe off my square here in case I need it. And right here we have a little dot. So I'm going to go in with the back of my paintbrush and dip it right into the black paint and put a little dot here right about the middle. Okay. We have another one right about here. So I'm gonna go back into my black paint and put that one right there. Right there, okay? 
and we have two on this one. So we'll put one here and one here. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got the neck in shape. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to outline this in white, which is going to be a little difficult. So I'm wondering if I should use a paint pen. And I do happen to have a nice white paint pen. I'll see how this one works. I'm not sure how it's going to work. But I do have a few, so we can try. We'll try a couple here. I got a Sharpie pen and I got a Posca pen. So I'm going to outline this in white. This will be a nice one here. I think the Posca is working quite nicely. It's just sometimes easier to use a paint pen. And Posca is an acrylic paint in the pen. I don't like that it's making those little where it hits like some roughness it makes it a little messy. So we might have to go in a little bit with our blue. I don't know if you can see me. Hopefully you can. I'm turning my canvas around to match up. I use these Posca pens for my journal, but... might not be so good with this but it, we we tried it anyways to see how it would work and what I'm gonna do here is just go in a little bit with my blue paint with my number six um, bright and I'm gonna go in with my to my blue here and just kind of edge that a little bit just kind of edging it, getting some of that off of there. You want to be neat with this. Very good. Get back into some of my blue. Get back in there. Oops. My Sally's with me this morning in the studio. Once again, because this is the second day actually that I'm working on this, um, I wanted to make sure it was all dry. Do you ever watch Helen Wyatt? I think it's her last name. Uh, she's an older woman who makes these cement projects and they're so cute and she just gets such a thrill when it turns out and I have her on YouTube right now she's in my other area okay so we're gonna wait until that dries a bit I'm gonna put some more paint in there some more of the brown I think I'm gonna use my big this flat brush, see if I can get a nice, let's see. I may have to get some more raw umber out. Yeah, I think so. I think I do have to get some more of that out. Let's see. It's right in front of me. That's a uh, basic paint, by the way. I think I did say that before. Don't need a lot just to cover, get that in there. 
make it neat this is a pickup there okay all right so our next part to this project is that we are well we have to actually um put some designs into that don't want to do that yet um i think what i want to do though is i want to transfer uh some of the designs back on here so i'm going to put my um I'm just going to stick it here so I can see where I'm at with my paper. And I'm going to get my tape. And I approximate right where this should be. Let's see if I can line it up pretty good. Again line it up I'm gonna cover that up all right okay. I think that's about right Sure as heck don't want that to move. Alright, now I want to get my stylus. Okay. And draw these designs back on here. Just so I can see them. They should be good, I'm hoping. Even if everything else is not in place, at least we can get these in the right place. That is a little bit bigger, so I'm going to have to make that somewhat bigger. Get these little dots in here so I know that they're supposed to be where they're at. I hope that I have it in the right spot, but... I am going to make this line so that I know that's how big that pickup should be. And hopefully in the right spot, we'll see. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, let's see if I got that right in the right spots. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Well, yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, my pickup's in the wrong spot, though. So I'm going to have to fix that. All right. So, what we'll do here... Now that we can see what's going on, I can, we got some of it in the right spot. We'll just go like that, and we'll cover that up. Go into my brown. Okay. 
not sure that I really like where that's at there. We're still going to make it a little smaller. We'll just put it right there. Okay. Now, we're going to move this over a bit too. Um, yeah, I want to get this covered here. Might take a few, a few, uh, get one over it a few times. Okay. All right. Um, so, as long as we have the idea of where it should be, we can, actually it is close to the edge there. Uh, from this picture that I brought, got, I have. All right, so what we want to do uh, next, we're going to make some orange, um, reddish colors here. Uh, let me get my... So I've got uh, naphthol crimson, my basics naphthol crimson. And I'm going to put that out. We're going to put some of these on the guitar. And let's see, I am going to use my round brush again. And we're just going to make little florets right where these little lines are. So what we're going to do is tap it and pull it in. And these are qu quite large actually, so uh, I'm going to kind of make it a little bigger. So we're just kind of bringing them in, uh, tapping it, bringing it in, lifting it up. And then I'm kind of just making it a little larger. I'm going to put one here. Like that. I want these to be a little larger. One was right here. So tap, just bring it in and lift up. And you can make them a little wider if you like. Kind of looks nicer, wider. Looks more of a, like a flower now. Okay, and we have one that's down here, so we'll just tap it in. Could probably use a larger round brush. That's all right, we'll get this in there like that. And we have another one over here. Right here. Ooh. A little too much paint. Um, so let's see here. All right, so we got the white on. I'm going to get that in there too. Oh, this here, um, we have to get around that. So I'm going into my white. And, uh, what we're just going to do is, uh, draw little lines here. Bye.
about a half inch apart. Right. Okay. Uh, inside these little flowers, it's blue. So I'm gonna grab my my cobalt blue. Just put the paint in. Watch that you don't touch your other pieces here. We can mix that with a little white so it shows up. I think that would be a good idea. So our little hearts here are blue, so we'll get those in. put uh, little dots in between our little lines that are up here so I'm just going to tap them in See how cute that is? Now, if you don't want to tap it in with your brush, you can go in with the back of your brush, like we did with the black. Just tap it in that way. We're going to have to mix a little bit more here. I got a lot to do. Can do it this way. All right, now um, <clears throat> I have to outline this and then I will continue to work on um, making 
that other line disappear. Alright, um, all these things get outlined also, the flowers, so I'm going to do that. If you find that your point is getting flat, just roll it back into the paint. Okay. Now, these also get outlined. I'm just looking at my here, a little bit larger. I need a little yellow and we're getting close to getting this done so okay so my yellow is a master's choice which I picked up from Hobby Lobby okay and this is yellow in here so this little upside down bell is yellow and we and mine end up adding some white to that just so that it's not so transparent sometimes white is your friend okay I'm gonna get my number six bright going back into that raw or burnt sienna Getting rid of some of these lines that are here and trying to get rid of this also. And it's starting to blend now, it's starting to go away. Alright, and then the other thing I want to do is right here, I made a little bit of a 
line that was just a tad too big. So I'm just going to go in there and clean that up. All right, so there's those pickups that are, are those little, um, I'm going to make those white. I'm going in with my brush here, uh, with the back of my brush, and I am going to put, let's see, I think there's six to, wait, there might be more. Six? No, there's six. So, I'm going to try to get these to be in decent order here. So we got one, two, three, four, oops, five, six. I want to make those a little bigger. All right, and then we are going to um, add a little white dot to the middle of each of these little flowers. Just right in the middle. Oop. Little middle. Boing. And boing. Okay. And let's see here. Boy, there's a lot of decor here. Oh, hmm. I don't know why that's torn. It's interesting. I don't know how that happened. Let's see. All right, so in this, we have a little design as well. So it's white. <clears throat> and uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to pick up that white again, or that yellow with some white, just in order to try to get this a little bit more filled in. That's much better. You can see it now. Yellow is very transparent, no matter what paint you buy. It's just one of those transparent colors. All right, so I'm going to outline that in red, my naphthol crimson. Just the top part. like that. Now, with my white, well, you know what, with some of my yellow that I'm going to mix with white, um, that I have mixed with white, we're going to add some of these little, cute little, just little dots here and there. Oh, that's terrible. That's not very good. <clears throat> It's almost covered. I'm going to have to go over that again. Still have a little yellow residue in my brush here. <clears throat> oh, I must have bumped into that. Kind of got that too, so I have to fix that one. Dear me. Oh, dear me. All right, so let's see here. Oh dear. Well, I'm going to go in with my the back of my brush because I think this will turn out a little bit better if I just tap it like that. Okay. 
Okay, put one here. with my yellow brush little comes off of these like that put some highlights on my little um, heart things here just uh, with some white some with my leaves just to give it a little bit of pizzazz down with some of that Now, even though I, I'm going to I'm going to put some dots in here with some of my white pen, uh, only because I want to be able to see this. So I'm just going to highlight this a little bit. Put little dots that are here. Let's see if I can get this to start working here. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so I want to decorate this some more, and I am going to put some little dots through here. And some through here. Let's see, where else, where else, where else? Got these. I gotta tell ya, I guess this could be white instead of black. You can see it. And I'll highlight the strings too. So, um, these are also white. This one comes like that. Sort of like, <gasps> ooh, that's not good. Ah, oh, jeez. 
pen is not good. Can you believe that? See, even artists make goof ups here. Jeez. Let's see if I can. That was just too good to be true. All right, we're going to wipe that off. And, <laughs> boy, talk about a mistake, huh? Okay. Just go back over this and we'll use paint. We'll just do it with the. That go back into my yellow. Sometimes stuff happens, you know, you just, if it does, you just fix it, that's all. Just fix it. Things can be fixed very easily in acrylic. It's amazing it dries so darn fast and you can fix things so never worry about things like that and this here that'll that'll get fixed too because it just needs to dry and it'll go back to itself again So now what we're going to do, instead of uh, like before, um, okay, go into my white, I'm going to make these lines here, and there was one right here. This one has sort of like a little bit of a triangle okay uh, I think that all of these that were marked here that I have marked on the pattern were all triangles okay Let me just clean those up a bit. All right, let's clean this one up. Now, in between... It's just little white lines like this. Oh, that one didn't turn out so nice. This is so pretty. All right. Uh, what else here? Let's see. All right. So we've got some really cool lines that go around here, and they are out of white. So I'm going to go into my white with my little brush here. And I want to kind of extend it a little bit. So I'm going to put my glazing liquid in there. Right, so we're gonna have one that comes like sort of now I'm holding my brush back here because I want to let this loose it has to be loose 
All right, so let's see. Oh, uh, not so good. Not so good. There, that's good. That's much better. And then one actually comes off of this and goes that way. Then we have another one that comes around that goes like that. Okay. I'm going to pick up my glazing liquid again because you need to have this pretty wet for it to work. All right, so there's one that comes around here like this. And something like this. And one that comes down like that. Actually, this is like a little heart that comes out of that. And there's one. These go around like here. And one that comes around here. And these, uh, these lines don't really have to be perfect. I mean, it's... You know, it's it's just the way it is. And there's a little, okay. It's just giving that feel of a Mexican design. Put a little dot here. My white. Little dot, maybe one here, maybe one, well, um, here, one here, there's one here, okay, and uh, let's put one right here, all right, and then we're going to bring that, make that a little darker here. Gonna. Now I have to draw it in because I let it go there. All right, so let's put some lines around everything. Oh, you can't even see these ones, huh? Get them a little darker. There's one that comes around here. <clears throat> That one's just a tad too big. Too big. I'll wipe that off. There we go. Let's see here. Maybe I could get a little bit cleaner. Just little lines, just showing attention to that area. Now here, we have some lines. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Where else? There's some here. So I guess the only thing, so I gotta highlight those um, frets on the guitar. So I'm gonna go into that raw umber and just highlight these a little bit. So we know, oops. Okay, so then we're going to uh, do some strings here. Now, when we do our strings, we don't have to be real um, straight. I mean, we don't have to draw a straight line. And they're going to attach to these little dots here. So I'm going to grab some of my paint, kind of loose paint. And let's just kind of get with this if I can hit it pretty close. We're just going to draw some a few lines. Let's see here. just to indicate that there's some lines here or some um, strings. a hard time with straight lines. Boy, I'll tell you, what kind of artist am I, huh? Oh, boy. That's, I, I've never tackled guitars because of this. My uh, poor line making here. So we'll just cover it with black and start over again. See if we can wipe this one off. The other thing I wanted to do too that I kind of looked over here. Um, well, let me get some of this paint. Try to cover this up again. Just tap it in there. Okay. Um, the inside here, I didn't get that line, so I'm going to do that, try to get that in there. Uh, not too much of a fuss here. My pressure is not heavy.
All right, I'm gonna let that dry and we'll be back. Okay, uh, I went back in here um, and uh, did a few um, changes because I just didn't like some of the things that were going on with the pi picture. I kind of fixed this uh, with the painting actually. I made my lines a little straighter and neater. Um, and I actually uh, added some more to these flowers. Uh, I just wanted a little bit more pizzazz to them. But in general, I just kind of like updated a little bit. I didn't really go into it too hard because I, I you know, I still like the painting. And uh, I like I see little things here, you know, that I'm going to go and fix. But, uh, you know, basically... I think I'm I'm pretty well set on this, and um, what was that other? Here we go. Just kind of going over some of these other areas that I see now that it's kind of dry and everything. So sometimes your hands get in the way and kind of smear what you have going on. So that's why I, poor Sally, she's trying to get uh, straightened out. So uh, now we just have to add the strings, which I had a hard time doing before. Um, I'm going to put some dots in here because I didn't like those dots from the, you know, before. Um, hopefully that will dry a little lighter. Let's see if I can get that a little. It will probably dry lighter, I'm hoping. Anyway, I just have maybe that brown on my brush here. So uh, this is a six-string guitar. So I think what I want to do, I'm going to start with the center and put a dot here. Uh, maybe grab some of the yellow. I don't know. Just a little yellow and white. Got the back of my pen, uh, my paintbrush. And I'm going to put one right in the middle and start with that. Just kind of like giving me an idea like where the middle string is. Uh, even on the guitar. And... Um, Paint's a little dry, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Because I really don't want... So we're going to put one here. And one here. Kind of even them out a little. This is kind of hard to do, so... You know, you want to try to have them a little even anyways. Um, I'm going to grab extra paint off of here. Okay. All right. So now the strings. Because I have such a hard time with straight lines. I'm going to use my T square. And let's see. We're going to start with this one. And they don't have to be perfect. But you want to have kind of like a, a, you know, you want to have it as straight as possible. Okay, so I'm going to go into my white and I'm using my number one round. I'm going to grab a little water for that too because I want a little bit of a flow. I'm going to spritz it. Let's see. Okay, I know. Here we go. I've got a little water spritzer here because I do want it to flow pretty easily. I don't want to have any dry spots in this. And you don't have to go all the way up on this. Just in certain areas, you just want to be sure that you are kind of straight. So we'll just like go here. Just lightly go. And maybe through here. Oop. And uh, maybe just a tad there. All right, so we got that one string. So this is all you have to do. Just try to get it looking like at least, oops, see how that, okay, maybe I should have put my dots in the after. Um, that it kind of, has that indication uh, that these are the strings. Okay. Okay. 
I'll have to touch that up again with some darker brown. If you have enough um, paint on your brush, that's important. So you're just getting it right to where their strings are. I think this is coming along quite nicely now. Um, I was so worried about this. I, I'll tell you because I am not one that makes a good straight line by myself. And I'm real picky about that. I, this one's a little darker. Okay. Maybe just tad one up here. And it just indicates that there's strings. It just uh, indicates that there's strings, and that's what we're looking for. Just an indication. You want your little pick up here to pick it up. Okay, and maybe right here. Just a little bit here. Alright, so we can add this one up too. We want to just kind of. Okay, so we got that in then. Let me straighten up that black, I mean that brown there, and we'll be finished with this painting. We can sign it. It is completed, except for right here. <laughs> Every time I look at this, I see something different. I am so happy that you could join me today with for this painting. Um, I don't know what I would do without you. And, and I'm just glad that you could come and paint maybe along or it's all you have to do if you're having a like you want to see something a little closer, you just have to rewind. That's what's nice. All right. Um just see a little bit of a problem but we're gonna fix that too okay okay let's see I see a couple little areas that we need to straighten up paint over that'll be good um, this here I'm not real happy with that middle string it seems to be not quite right so it's okay to this point here i'm gonna just uh straighten this out and you don't have to be this fussy i'm just that way i you know you do the best you can and that's all you can do um you know i think i was fine until i hit that part right there but okay we're gonna just kind of go over that a little bit so it's not so crooked looking and if you make your strings kind of like this that way you have shorter lines if they're they're not straight you don't have to worry about it and that's the key so I'm going to fix that string as soon as that dries and I'm going to sign this anyway so um, sometimes I don't sign them in front of you guys but today we're gonna sign it uh, oh I did want to fix something here too did want to fix this actually I think I could go into my lighter blue here um, and go into my glazing liquid because I just want to glaze this right here and uh, it's gonna be like that it matches the background more but I just kind of want to glaze that kind of make that a little less rough here there. and uh, even though it's a little narrow narrower on this side maybe I can just kind of go on this one too so that they're even and I'm just using my finger to kind of rub that in there And uh, let's see if we can sign it. Now let's see. What shade? I, I think I like this one here. So I'm going to go into that shade. You can decide what you would like to sign. 
with. Now, a lot of people sign it on the right. I'm a little different. I'm going to sign it right in here where this heart is. Grab a little water. Make this a little bit less thick because you want it to be thin enough that you can sign without uh, any problems. So we're going to go M. how's that and that's my signature I don't sign my whole name I just sign my initials so I hope you enjoyed this painting it certainly was fun uh, bringing it to you and I hope you like and subscribe and um, even share if you would like and if you can see fit I will post this on Patreon um, the the traceable and all you have to do is join for a dollar a month and um, that's all I'm asking so uh, if you can do that I'd appreciate it and until the next time um, we'll see you next time and God bless